Well, ladies, buckle up, because we're here ready to go on the way once again, here live from the Paradox offices here in Stockholm, Sweden. My name is Matt Hoving. I will be your uh, host for this particular session, as uh, I will be taking you through a wonderful world here at the Europa Universalis 4 with my Delft Blue mug, which is now empty of coffee. I need somebody to actually run me some coffee there. For those people that weren't here last week, well, the world as we know it has changed ever so slightly here as uh, for, as uh, nations have started to take their um, their place amongst their compatriots among uh, in the world here. And for those people that are new through this concept, basically what we do is we play the beta in-house with around 30 people and basically what happens is we'll show you what is currently going on with the beta as we're developing Wealth of Nations, which is uh, currently pretty much in full development as it is. We've already added a couple of new features, uh, such as these little uh, seeing uh, who is at war and that sort of stuff, and being able to see enemy generals and, and armies and that sort of thing, and a whole slew more of stuff when it comes to that. So uh, let's go and uh, dive straight into this game and take you through who is actually in this match throughout. So I'm quickly going to... All right, my audio is fine. So uh, let's take this away, shall we? What does the world actually look like as it is? Well, we have uh, 30 players, like I mentioned. We have uh, Ari coming here out as the Mamluks, which is uh, already spreading quite nicely, having taken a big chunk of uh, northern Africa and uh, all over the place around here. And, are they, is she actually going to go into Gondor? That is the real question. This province right here, that's going to be uh, critical for one of our players. Because we got one player who's playing as uh, Aragon, who's decided that it is his job to, in fact, none other to do, uh, to, yeah, to pretty much become the king of Aragon, or the king of Gondor, considering he's Aragon, and he's a bit of a Lord of the Rings geek, to be fair. It went to the point that we actually had a discussion earlier today whether or not uh, Gandalf or um, Gandalf or uh, Dumbledore would be uh, would be victorious in a fight. And to be fair, to be fair, Gandalf is a is, is a demigod. So you know, I, I don't I don't think I don't think Dumbledore would stand much of a chance. But that was my argument. Moving uh, swiftly on, we got Alexa Van, who's coming out here as the Hansa, as one of the other players. Bushoff, the uh, lead of the team here, as Bohemia. Birken as Hungary already grabbing a massive amount of territory so far. Karsten as Burgundy, who was at the receiving end of a pounding last time around and had to and was pretty much forced to uh, blood to to lose uh, none other than Flanders there, which was uh, problematic. But he's managed to recover quite nicely throughout as he managed to uh, take Bawa and uh, is uh, well on on the way to get Liège as well. But uh, he played Russia last session, came in second, and uh, he was allowed to pick his nation, which was Burgundy. He will probably form into the Netherlands later on. Maybe we shall see how that goes. Catalag playing as Varangjar. I, I, I'm still not able to properly pronounce this, guys. So if you're on the forum or something like that, if you go on to a plaza and want to like put an audio file on there to tell me how to properly pronounce this state, I will do it because I feel ashamed of being able to pronounce stuff properly. That's why I call... Uh, cities like Berlin and Paris, I call it Paris and Berlin because, you know, what are you going to do? Or Köln instead of Cologne, that sort of thing. Anyway, he's down here. You got Goose Creature here coming out as Portugal, who's already dipped his toes in the what appears to be the Atlantic. We're not quite sure what the hell it is, but there is some territory out here. Yes, we are playing with a random uh, new world on the other side of the planet, which... Uh, May cause some interesting stuff. We can uh, quickly look over here what sort of... Yeah, there's some trade routes going out here towards the Brazilian trade note. So he could make masses amount, mass amount of money. Maybe we'll also see who, who is going to be coming out on top of that. Then there is Grugi. For some bizarre reason, the favorite for... The, the public favorite for these sessions. I'm still not quite sure why. But he's uh, gone so far as to enslave the Pope. Because that is a thing now. He's got Sardinia. And like I said last time around, considering he is originally from Barcelona, it, it, he's kind of going along the path of saying, you know what? Punic Wars were pretty cool. I'm going to get Carthage back in the play. And that was pretty much his idea. And he will try to go back down to Gondor and become the king of Gondor. Aragon, king of Gondor. Yes, that is the actual joke. Garam playing as the Ottomans. Doing all right. Nothing, nothing really out of the ordinary. He went on a little bit of an expedition last time around into 
uh, Morocco, and he actually, uh, I think he actually managed to uh, win that war here. So all that territory that was uh, captured at the start of the game has now been released once again. So his expedition in towards the North Africa was okay, but we'll see whether or not his uh, his projection is going to be enough. Area would actually be in a good place right now to uh, well say, you know what, I'm gonna re I'm gonna completely reject anything you're doing, and you're no longer allowed to walk through my territory. That would screw him up big time. Harry Cage is uh, as Venice. It's Venice. What can you say? Mr. Nibbles is the Mughals. Yes, he's finally formed it. Took him a long time. Basically, the main issue he had is uh, he had issues trying to integrate Upper Doab for a very, very long time, really. But in all honesty, he, he finally managed to do it. There are no rebels around here. There's 14,000 troops sitting there. And he's finally managed managed to uh, form the Mughals and immediately as well under, uh, immediately gets some forces out and is well underway of uh, integrating Persia here as well so we'll uh, we'll dip in with that later Emrop is crimea it's crimea what can you say nuzia as lithuania is a part of the big alliance between poland denmark Ooh, and now yeah between poland and denmark which is a very very strong combo of course uh considering this is multiplayer and these are two players the commonwealth is not an option in this one so uh we won't see that coming it's uh, the commonwealth is a firm uh npc only or ai only mechanic uh, where was I? Palladium! As England. Well, she was at the bit of uh, under receiving out of a pounding, to say the least. Most of uh, England has it captured by Denmark, who has quickly decided to rename it back to Jorvik, as it should be. And uh, leaving Scotland to take over pretty much the rest of northern, uh, northern England, at least leaving the door open uh, to take over northern England. Petfra coming here out as Bavaria. The only nation in the Bavarian or in the Austrian coalition that is, in fact, not a uh, a a, um, a wonderful. Yeah, he's got a he's got a weird ass family name here, a weird ass dynasty, Hafenbredel instead of uh, you know the proper Habsburgian term. But uh, speaking of that, Potcat as Tuscany, yes, our project leader on uh, our latest announced project. Iron is uh, playing down here, and he's being surrounded by, uh, well, his uh, good friend Aragon. So he's going to need to watch out. And he's actually already said that he's going to go for full role play on this one. Full role play. If he loses out here, if he gets crushed by Aragon in any form or fashion, he's going to play as the Knights, the Knights of Rodos, and pretty much try to purge the um, uh, purge the Mediterranean of any pirates. At least that was his idea. Rufo coming out as Japan all the way down here. He's going to be playing single player for the longest time. Sacrifice is Denmark, like I said. Managed to take over Jorvik back, which is, you know, weird. Uh, Sevancourt as Brene is also one of the new players in here. I actually suggested to him, like, you know, you could play as uh, these guys up here. Uh, another nation I cannot pronounce properly. So why don't you play as Brene? Because nobody's going to invade you. Ache is going to be down there, sure. But they can't do much for you because, you know, they're going to have to land there. And C is always a, a problem there. Now, he appears to already be at war with uh, Makassar down here. So he's going he's gonna to have to take this trade note, this Filipino trade note, which, in my opinion has potential to be the most powerful one in the, in the whole game, at least for when it comes to trade value. Side burnout as Savoy, the biggest Savoy I've ever seen. Uh, we got letter Z as Morocco, who is now on the, uh, again, a war with Castile. Who is else in this? It's the Ottomans once again. Low, low, low war exhaustion, like low war enthusiasm here. High war exhaustion by Morocco. There's no way in hell Castile is going to be able to lose this. And I'm not quite sure whether or not the Ottoman uh, deployment, or, you know, it, um, damage projection, power projection is really worth all that much. We shall see. Zoft in the meantime, Scotland is looking very, very strong. Uh, Johan, of course, our uh, studio manager coming out as Poland. Doomdark, our CK2 project manager coming out here as Brandenburg. Greykolf coming here out as Sweden. Still has a big chunk of Finland there. And I don't know, is he actually part of a... Uh, where are you? Are you actually part of a... Are you a vassal? Are you actually... It, does, it appears that he's been released. No, hold on, I'm looking at the wrong country here. It, yeah, it looks like he is still in that personal union with Denmark, which may cause issues later on. Niklas as France, the blue blob themselves, has been pretty much been exercised because, you know, Burgundy is there and he's at war with the Ottomans at the same time. And so they've all been called in 
most of uh, Iberia has uh, decided to jump in on this war here with the Ottomans, so that's not going to be very helpful for him. Then we got Wiz, our AI director, who has built up the AI core that we're still trying to name. Um, we just, at some point, we were talking about calling it Hal, and then GLaDOS came up, and you know what, and other, other names came up, so we decided, you know, let's, let's, let's leave that question open for now. For now. Jonas coming out here is Muscovy, uh, Muscovy, Muscovy being the second strong nation last session, and that is our players for this, uh, for this particular game. So let's dive straight in and see where all the, where all the combat is going on. It looks like Denmark is, uh, embroiled in the Swedish War for Independence. Swedish War for Independence has kicked off. And let's take a look here to see what sort of power projection Sweden can actually have. They've got 19,000 troops versus Denmark. Denmark must have massive amount of troops due to the fact that they... Uh, oh, same number. That's actually quite surprising. And a offer has been deployed. So uh, it looks like Sweden is free. Sweden is free, everybody. Has managed to uh, gain independence under the personal union with Denmark, and maybe Norway is still part of that as well, but I'm not quite sure whether that is the question. We can actually look right now to see if that is still the case. Yeah, it is still under Denmark. I don't think we're going to see Norway gain independence in this session or not, but we will have to see. And no, None of our players is actually playing as Norway, which is... Uh, which is not very helpful. Of course, in this particular session, we're going to have our developers coming in on the couch as well. Possibly at some point, be maybe at the end, because there is still a lot of setup currently going on. I'm going to lower the music ever so slightly because it may be a little bit loud there. But the world is in turmoil. There's still this massive war going on in Morocco over the Castilian conquest of Oran, which is a extension of the uh, Reconquista, which you can actually have. I'm quickly going to go under here towards mission. Continue the Reconquista, uh, where you have to take either uh, Tangiers, Melilla, or Oran. And that is currently happening here, as uh, Oran has been has been taken. But uh, Castile is winning this war with a 50% war score, which is not going to be helpful. And this dives straight in towards one of the new features here for... Um, uh, for uh, the patch. As you can see, this little star here that's right above the uh, army name, that means there's, there's, that there's a general there. So that actually helps you to identify quite quickly on where these enemies are. And you could maybe even find enemy kings and crush them as they go along. Portugal, going all the way down Morocco. But the thing about Portugal is, is they actually gave their stepping stone into the New World, Cape Verde, away to the, the Spanish. Mainly because they were rather afraid that the Spanish would completely and utterly annihilate Portugal, which is of course understandable. But uh, it is going to give, it's going to take Portugal a little bit longer than usual, having to jump from the Azores to Barbados, which is now actually part of the mainland in this particular game. Maybe we should probably see our first colonies coming in from uh, the Castilians somewhere in the near future, coming in on the... Uh, Island of Bekua Aruba. Because now that is a thing. Yeah. So about 400 of you have managed to uh, tune in for this session. Last time we actually peaked at about 800 of you who managed to come around. Get a, get a, throw, a, throw a tweet out there or anything like that and uh, get your friends to join in and bask in the awesomeness that is 30 player multiplayer with Europa Universalis 4. It is quite amazing and like I said throughout these sessions we're going to show you all the new features that are being added through uh, Wealth of Nation as well as the patch slowly over time as we're uh, approaching uh, the uh, launch date as it is. We also have a lot more games coming up in the near future as well that you may want to go and check out. Uh, for instance tomorrow we have um, Tomorrow we're uh, talking about uh, Magic of Wizard Wars. We've got a whole bunch of stuff for War of the Vikings going on as well. So uh, if you're interested in any of the historical stuff, be sure to check out those games, except Wizard Wars. It's not very historical. It's more of a slapstick sort of comedy, brutality sort of thing. But if you like Vikings, War of the Vikings is maybe your uh, go-to game there. Back to EU4, though, as Portugal has some serious issues with rebels. And says some Vezian nationalists are there. Can he actually handle them? Some harsh treatment possibly be the case, but that's going to be problematic. He's got over 960 administrative power. I'm not quite sure why he is using that just yet. Maybe getting those exploration ideas out right now wouldn't be much. Wouldn't be very helpful because exploration ideas come under diplomatic power, 
which he can take as well. I'm kind of confused why Portugal hasn't gone for next tier of technology, maybe trying to integrate some of these areas in the near future, trying to carve up Morocco. Who knows? But we'll have to look at that later.